Hello and welcome to the Bobby and Beardy Show. I'm Bobby. And I'm still Beardy. He's still Beardy, always Beardy. Always. And we're here to talk about <laughs> movies and TVs and comic books and tech and anything we fancy, really. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the film Wicked Little Letters. Now, before we start that, have we got any culture to talk about? Anything fun? Any, any fun TV or anything to watch? Talk about? Uh, no, no. I've been away with work this week. I had no time to do anything. I got a little drunk and I don't remember much culture. So let's move on to you. <laughs> doesn't remember much culture. Well, I watched Elimination Chamber uh, in Perth, Australia. I wasn't in Perth, Australia. The show was in Perth, Australia. <laughs> I didn't fly over. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm going to be honest with you because um, the stadium show, big cage in the middle of the ring, uh, flat seats and things. I don't think anybody would have been able to see very much at all. And I bet they prayed, paid a pretty penny for it. Yeah. The show itself, uh, completely predictable. Uh, everyone who you thought was going to win did win. Um, Drew McIntyre Wait. was the only one going into the match with a story. Yeah. Are you saying wrestling isn't real? Uh, listen, as far <laughs> as I'm aware, wrestling is 100% real. And sometimes it's uh, okay. just really predictable about who the best wrestler uh, okay, okay, is. Okay. Um, okay. Knows you silly sausage. Uh, Drew McIntyre <laughs> was the only one going into the men's chamber with a story that connected to the title. Becky Lynch might as well have said two or three months ago that she's challenging for the belt at WrestleMania. So having the match just it's pointless. It's like an unnecessary uh, road stop they have to make. Uh, the, the, and then the other two matches equally predictable. And basically nothing changed, essentially. They could have skipped yeah. the entire show and just gone, yeah, these two lads are winning, you know. <laughs> Uh, the quality of the wrestling was fine, but kind of unforgettable, like unmemorable. Uh, two chamber matches, two, one too many. Uh, you're making, you're weakening the product, just like with the Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah. You just have one really good match rather than two fine matches. And that's my opinion on the Elimination Chamber. Will I be watching WrestleMania? No, two nights. Can't be bothered. Cannot really? be bothered. Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I might change my mind, but right now I might. Be <laughs> <bothered>. <laughs> <laughs> Who bloody knows? Um, I'm fickle. Uh, right. Well, that's all my culture. So let's uh, crack on with the rest of the show. The important bit of the show, we're going to talk about Wicked Little Letters, like I said. Now, here's a quick rundown. Wicked Little Letters is a British black comedy mystery film set in 1920s England. It's directed by Thea Sharrock and written by Johnny Sweet. Uh, the film stars Olivia Colman as Edith Swan, Jesse Buckley as Rose Gooding, and Timothy Spall as Edward Swan. <gasps> Billy, tell us a little more. Yeah, no, exactly as you said. It's uh, a small, sleepy town south of the England, just after World War One. Um, very much a a nothing happens town, and then suddenly, uh, one of the residents starts receiving profanity in the mail. Very um, rude letters. <laughs> very, very wicked little letters, you might say. Um, <laughs> they say the line in the, the film, by the way, and I went, yeah, they said the line. Yeah, they, said I, the they did the thing. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, and it's very much how that spirals, how the it goes from one family to the town to, I think, the UK government gets involved. Oh, yeah. It gets far too out of hand far too quickly. Um, they say it's got that element of who done it, and that's quite good. I enjoy how they reveal that and when they reveal that, which we'll discuss in spoiler section. Um, but basically, in this family, there's uh, someone in the city, in the in the town, who maybe doesn't belong in the same way, and it's how they get ostracised. But surprisingly, all of it doesn't. It's it's very funny. It's it's really well written, um, except the swearing. The swearing is terribly well, badly written, <laughs> but it adds to the charm. <laughs> it's very rude, but it's also rude. by today's standards. Not that rude at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to bring up straight away. Is uh, no spoilers to the to the film itself, but mm. I've never heard the term "foxy asked so yeah. many times. And uh, I sent you a message during the week that that I'm I'm a hundred percent sure these days that would be more of a compliment than anything else. Uh, yeah, hundred percent would be. Doesn't sound insulting, and it is without a doubt the most used term in all of the all of the letters that get sent. But I, there's a reason for that, in fairness. Yeah, um, yeah it, it fits with the fact that like, people fall into habits and like, especially when you're swearing, you, you always find what you say. You'll find that people swear in specific ways oh, yeah. and it fits. Obviously, that fits badly into the whodunit section because it's relatively easy to find out who says that. <laughs> um, but oh. 
even the bad spurring is well written. The the characters are surprisingly well fleshed out and well rounded for what isn't a very long film either. No, it's not that long at all. Uh, no, the characters are already well fleshed out, and you 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 get an understanding of all of them, all mm. of them, all of the, the the main set of which there are uh, three or four. Um, yep. Uh, and yeah, they, they feel like these are these are real people. Um. And and it's it's a very entertaining film. I I thoroughly enjoyed it actually. Very much more than I thought I would, if I'm honest. Like I, I went in because I like Olivia Coleman. She's very funny. So I thought, you know what, this is going to be pretty good anyway. But Jesse Buckley does a great job with the the rowdy next door neighbor. Timothy Spall is a fantastic actor anyway, and he plays his questionable role outstandingly. Um, but the cops, I think the cops in the, the small town are arguably some of the best characters. Classic bumbling um, English coppers. Ah, gotta love them. Gotta love those bumbling English coppers. Technical problems. Okay, what were we talking about? Because then we could just continue from there. <laughs> uh, the cops being the best characters, in my opinion. That's when you froze. Like, I think that women police officer is fantastic. The the constable and stuff, very um. Very, very well cast, very well acted. The the accents are outstanding. The topics of conversation, brilliant. It adds even more comedy element that isn't even necessary for the story, really. Yeah, I mean that's. Um, I think it is actually quite important to the story because it's it's, yeah, setting, it's, it's setting the it's setting the picture of the time because it's nineteen twenties yeah. England in the yeah. little seaside town of Little Hampton. I just I found it on my notes. I was like earlier I was looking for it. Yeah, like, What's it's it why are you looking over there? What's it called? <laughs> um, so it's it's smack bang, post war. Yeah. Um, suffragette movement going on there's a lot of characters that are un mm -hmm. female characters who are unhappy with their their lot in life and how they're you know being pushed back into their pre-war uh position in society and that that's a, that's a key part of some of the 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 the, the slightly second tier characters um, yeah yeah definitely all of that is is vital to, to the importance of the film and the you know the the, the sexism of the time of um, uh, woman police officer Moss being treated yeah. a certain way uh, and things like that. And it, it, it fleshes out this entire world so that you know exactly why some people are doing some certain things, essentially. Yeah, yeah um, like it, there's a lot of small stories going on at the same time. So obviously the, the letters being written and being received and how that progresses, main storyline. Next door neighbour who is dragged into that. And again, you, you see it in the, the trailer, so it's not a spoiler, but... There's accusations being thrown around and backstories of people there. Another big story. Then the woman police officer, the, why she is a police officer, the only one, why she gets treated the way she does. And then they say all these secondary and tertiary characters that are very small at the beginning become very, very big and very, very useful and very, very funny. They grow um, into the film, don't they? A lot of the, the characters yes. you meet early on. And they're all fun characters as well. Yeah. There's one character who uh, refuses to have a conversation until she has her boiled egg, and I very much enjoyed oh, that. I yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the acting performances from the, the well, everybody in general, everyone like big or mm. small roles, the police officers are great. The uh, the yeah, the, the extra the the larger female cast, but the uh, Olivia Commons excellent as Edith Swan. Jesse Buckley is fantastic as as Rosie Gooding, and Timothy Spall is brilliant yeah. as as the father. The big uh, bigger. Um, uh, Edith Swan, Olivia Coleman's character, is fascinating to watch uh, because she she wants to come off in a certain way, but she takes like loves the attention of letters, even though she's like condemning them. Yeah. Um, publicly, uh, it's it's great. Um, Rose Gooding is uh, sorry. Jesse Buckley is Rose Gooding, you know, the rougher <laughs> Irish woman, the the woman, this person who's come into town. You know, she likes to drink a bit, she likes to swear, allegedly a bit of a tart. Um, but at the same time, you can tell watching the film that she's a good mum, and she's like, yes. she's, she cares deeply about her daughter and her new partner. You know, heart of gold, mouth of a very rude person, <laughs> very rude indeed. Um, and Timothy Spall as 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 this cat as the as the as the dad um, is. Is excellent. He he makes zero effort to hide his contempt of many people in this film. Yeah, like I say, he's one of them. It's, it's been a a theme, I guess, with some of the stuff we've discussed. But he's a character that you kind of love to hate, and he does it outstandingly. Um, like 
the, the sexism of the time is quite a key plot point. And realistically, you only see it from about three characters, but it's so prevalent in how the story is done. Like, obviously, his is unshamefully just in the foreground. He will say it to his wife, to his daughter, to anyone who will listen. Oh, yeah. Um, the the police it. are a little softer on it. Like, not like on the topic, it's not a soft topic at all, um, but they're not as brutal and blunt about it. It's very much a this is the way of the world, so this is how it is. Yeah. Where Timothy Spall is. There should never be any change. Why have you seen these women doing the suffragette movements? This is ridiculous. There's a meanness about um, old yes. Edward Swan, the father yeah. character. Yeah. Everyone else is a bit more like, well, this is just how it is. But um, yeah. Um, what I will say about the film is, well, I I did find it amusing uh, and thoroughly enjoyable. I thought the trailer made it look like it was more, even more of a comedy than it actually yes. was. I thought it, it 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 you know had its its moments of, of comedy and I did laugh a lot. Borleg, I enjoyed that very much. Not even the biggest <laughs> joke of the film. It's just a thing. Right. I'm, <laughs> just I like, just enjoyed it. I found it it drifted far more to like a, a drama more often yeah. than anything else. I suppose it's a black comedy, so that's that's toe in the line, I suppose. It's just that the the, the, the reason I mention it is the trailer uh, there's two trailer cuts. There's one where they uh, all of the swearing's like not actually there and people are just gasping at reactions, which is quite a lot yeah. funnier than the actual trailer where they say all of the foxy ass nonsense. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I just, I just thought I'd mention it. It's, it is a comedy, but also there's more to it. You know, there's a bit of drama mm. to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, my, my other note here is about the suffragette movement, which we've already talked about. You know, woman police yeah. officer Moss wanted to get in that respect. And the women uh, not wanting to be put back into their previous war, uh, pro war, pro war, pre war um, <laughs> lifestyle. But they do even mention the fact that the, the women don't understand why she's a police officer. Like, well, it's not a real police officer, you're a woman police officer. And it, it's only when you see Rose Gooding um, saying, like, I'm not going to call you a woman police officer. I can see you're a woman, you're a police <laughs> officer. Like, her character in this small town is going against sort of. I wouldn't say racism is a thing here, but there's a, a stigma against her for being sort of Irish and coming across and being boisterous. So she goes against maybe nationalism, sexism, whatever it is, all of these sort of big topics. And she's there have it with, a, I guess, a more of 20th century, sort of 21st century uh, <laughs> um, mindset. And it, it's how she kind of puts a spanner in the works of this small town and no one's on board with it. But the growth is nice. But they are. Eventually, they're like, oh, bloody hog, old Irish woman, love her. Big <laughs> thumbs up. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's all I really have to say for spoiler free. Spoilers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thoroughly enjoyable, funny, um, and I, I, I mean, thumbs up. Thumbs up as well. Yeah, loved it. I'm too sure. I think I've given a thumbs up to every film so far, though. Uh, yeah, I think I have I, I, as well. No, no, you didn't. Of course, Madame my Web. favorite film of the year, <laughs> Madam Web, which is thumbs <laughs> down. Um, all right, brilliant. Well, there you go. And let's move into Spoiler Town. Let's get the old spoilers on the screen for anyone joining. Just so I guess the main thing I, oh, I forgot to mention that there's things below, there's time codes below, uh, but we're in the middle of the video. Well, everyone who starts it is going to see it until the end. Let's oh, be honest, it's a dear, fantastic podcast. So, dear, oh dear. Oh. What do you want anyway, to kick us off with spoilers while I... Yeah, I was going to say, the main spoiler I want to go through is the main spoiler. Like, um, <laughs> that obviously uh, Olivia Coleman, either Swan, is writing letters to herself as a way to maybe get some attention because um, she's very, very downtrodden in the society, but also specifically in her family. Um, but I like the fact that that's revealed about halfway through the film. So then there's an element of, okay, we know what's going on. But then there's also like the whodunit section and then the women in the town banding together to try and find out if she's actually done it and the, the plot to catch her. Um, there are some, some points I think are glossed over when it comes to the fact that it's her writing it. Obviously, the, the way they find her with the, the handwriting analysis, which I'm sure we'll touch on a bit further on down the line. Um, but when she writes many letters to herself, um, again, it's, it's all for attention. But then she writes one that her mother reads and it basically leads to her dying um yeah she kills and, her mum via a yeah. letter which is quite the scary and there seems to be very little remorse that's the only thing that really confused me with it like, yeah I'm, I'm assuming if her dad read it she wouldn't have cared because she is very much 
like subjugated and it, it's it's a terrible environment her mum doesn't help but she doesn't, also doesn't particularly hinder no um and i don't think killing her mum was the intention oh no but it, it it seems very much like she doesn't even the the times when she is sad about it it seems very forced and very active because that's how she is at that point um, oh yeah she's spiraled by then yeah so yeah. she sends a letter to herself um and her, her mum reads it collapses heart attack presumed from shock or something like that yeah uh and you know she quickly just burns the letter because there's an open fire uh hiding hiding the evidence um but yeah no she doesn't really feel her anymore she's back sending more letters like almost immediately to the wider community and, and things and she, but towards the end of the film like when she's it's revealed to everybody i mean it's revealed to us early it goes yeah. from who's doing this uh, to oh we know who's doing this how are they going to catch her doing this yeah it goes from who done it to how catch essentially which works absolutely fine but yeah. by the end of the film where she's like she's re- you know revealed in court as it's bloody you and then she's taken away she's just she's fully snapped like she's shouting at her dad that she's but, never coming home and she's laughing to herself but she's, she's lost it but she thing is this is my issue with it because they they obviously put in a section where she has remorse to Rose Gooding, her neighbour. They started off friends, then suddenly they weren't, and things. it became convenient, and a little bit by accident, that Rose gets blamed for the letters, because, well, she's a very sweary lady, and it makes sense. Um, but they, they put in a part where she's remorseful about how it wish it wasn't you that I did this to, and sorry about your family, which just shows more of a, a level of psychopath, sociopath for her mum. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, it's the whole the whole story is uh, the 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 why the reason this gets rolling is because of it's revealed that uh, her father just generally has a huge hatred for the neighbor, um, which essentially all comes back to uh, well, well, many things. She's rough around the edges, as we already discussed. But there's an incident at his birthday party where he sees his daughter enjoying herself a little too much, having fun. Uh, and, and you know that, that's when the relationships break down because he like she heads butts his like friend or something. Yes, uh, of course. It's a good scene. <laughs> it's a good scene. But that, from that moment, yeah, that's when he's he's gunning for her and everything else. Reg- I think I reckon he'd have kept gunning for her regardless of these letters. The letters are just a convenient thing in his head. Yeah. She he mer- very well may think that she is the guilty suspect regardless, but he hates her so much. He already. can't do anything else. But that's he's just yeah. going for it. They're literally at the end of the film, he's he's saying to his daughter, if she's getting taken away. I know you didn't do it. Uh, we'll get you out of prison. We'll we'll get her. And she, <laughs> and uh, Olivia Commons character is going, no, I did it. I did it. I'm admitting it right now. But it's because the 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 key aspect of the film, which we didn't mention in on in non spoilers, is that uh, she is in an abusive relationship with her father. He is yes. so controlling. At one point, she make, uh, he makes her write l- lines from the Bible 200 times. Yeah, two verses. Yeah, uh, two verses 200 times. Yeah, as, as a punishment for something absolutely just... For being too prideful, minor. I think, I was looking at a picture of herself in the paper. I'm yeah. pretty certain. Well, that's the other thing, is she, because she does, she does love that. She loves the attention, which is why she keeps yeah. going. Um, mm. and, then, and then I think, I think she liked, originally she likes the attention, from getting these letters and people feeling sorry for her and then she's looking like a good person a good christian and she's getting starting to escape the shadow of her father potentially by being able to do all these things but then then she just i think she just just likes likes doing it it's like her it's a, it's a way of venting it's a way of like yeah just getting something out there into the world because she can't do anything because of this massively controlling father figure who, well, which... who sends her fiance away that's what um, I was going to say. Pre, yeah. Pre-film. That's how controlling it is. Like he, they, she was engaged and he's like, get out, essentially. You don't even, you don't even see the, um, the fiancé. You just hear about him, his existence. Yeah. But it, it's honestly, the Wicked Little Letters, I guess, is as a result of this downtrodden lifestyle that she, she even mentions to him, like, you would never let me leave this house, would you? Like, she doesn't like it. He doesn't like it when she leaves. Um and again, it kind of happens after the mother dies and she tries to cook. She hasn't been cooking before because it was always the mum. And the dad gives her maybe not as much verbal grief, but there's very much that disappointed in you. you. I expect better from you. Even now, 
like yes his his wife's just died but her mum's just died and it's a life goes on look after the house do this for me yeah it's i'm not obviously condoning anyone doing this sort of like abuse or libel to anyone um i do like the fact they obviously use the correct legal term libel um which is yeah <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, it, it's very much all resulting from him. The, the the entire story wouldn't exist without him, really. Oh yeah, he's the driving force. He's the reason why it goes to the police in the first place. The accusations are made uh, to Jesse Buckley's character. Uh, he is uh, the one talking to the um, uh, the, the, the the legal child protective services. Hmm. He gets in touch with the CPS, child protection. Oh services, yeah, I mean, he? he also gets in uh, charge with the, in touch with the CPS. The uh, as, as revenge. That's almost directly after the birthday incident. Yes, the prosecutors is what I was trying to think of the word. There we go. Uh, in the court, <laughs> like he's the one like talking to them to like try and change their angle about you know did she actually have a husband or and things like that. He's he's clearly the one like pushing all those you know, those needles while his daughter's kind of just sitting there. Uh, enjoying the attention that she's getting because she's actually allowed to get some kind of but also not really he's not happy about it at the same time because it's shameful what's been said about her yeah Um, to to flesh out the point you were just saying there when you say did she have a husband this is about Rose Gooding where she says that she her husband died in the war and that's why she's a single mum with her child which we obviously find out to be fabricated and that's a whole point around can they trust her? Okay, we can't trust her, so she clearly wrote it until they do the handwriting analysis to, to actually catch her in the end. And it's a yeah. nice joint effort between the women of the town. Um, there's a whole spy mission, basically, around it, which is very, very nice. Um, it's, it's great, it's funny, and they, they, the cinematography for it as well, it's one of those things like, this person's doing a thing, pan out, pan across, zoom in. <laughs> it's really yeah. well done. They have a very complex uh, fake, well, not fake stamp, tampered with stamp, with evidence of those, so that when she eventually posts a letter, she's going to send a naughty letter to the judge. Mm-hmm. Cheeky. Uh, and they're like, no, we know that you did this because we've, we've, get, we've specifically given you this set of stamps to, to use. We've written your name on it. So when we reveal it with the, uh, with the special link, you know, you, you, you're guilty, uh, which is a fun way of doing it. What I would say is maybe if 150 letters or whatever was being sent in one day, essentially, maybe look at the person who's bought that many stamps recently. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm thinking that, about. That'd make a lot of sense. She's, this woman's getting an awful lot of letters sent to her, and an awful lot of letters has been sent as well in the same handwriting. Anybody <laughs> walk into that? That it's not the same yeah. person? Um, but Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, I think... Enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I liked, and we discussed this briefly before before starting this, um, some of the heat that the film has been getting is around um, choice of actors of colour. Um, because it's a 1920s England, um, there wouldn't be... It's a period piece. <laughs> yeah. However, like we said, it's one of those things where the ethnicity of the characters doesn't really affect the story at all. No. Um, like obviously maybe having Rose Gooding and being Irish because it fits to the story you can't really change that too much but the 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 judge um, woman police officer post office worker like there's a lot of people of colour in this or maybe not a lot but more than you'd expect and it doesn't deserve the heat it's been getting because they act, they act, they act it fantastically it's not necessary to the story yeah. who cares enjoy the film for what it is and it's a great film it's irrelevant the color yeah. of anybody's skin in 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 this film it's not a piece about racism or anything like that it's just a diverse cast giving uh mm-hmm. excellent actors an opportunity to shine um uh in a, in a piece it makes absolutely no no difference to the story about you know the, the fact there's a black judge the fact that yep. there's an asian female police officer or a black and I think uh, Lolly Adafope plays it outstandingly as well she she she's very turncoat in it she's very much Olivia Coleman is someone to look up to, and then suddenly it's like, well, actually, this isn't all adding up. I never liked her anyway, <laughs> which is quite good. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, if people have a problem with that, like, it's just... It's ridiculous. Just get over yourself, honestly. It yeah. makes no difference to any product. And this is, this is the way the world's going, and quite frankly, it's, it's, ne- it's neither good nor bad. It's just a thing. It doesn't matter. Yes, yes. Unless it's relevant to the story, who cares? Yeah. That's, that's it. That's all it needs to be. Yeah, and it's if you have a problem head. with that, yeah, when they had um, you know, 
black Johnny Storm in the last uh, Fantastic movie. It doesn't make any fucking difference. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't at all. Yeah, no. We could do a whole me. podcast on this as a subject. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a short podcast because it'll just be me saying it doesn't matter. Shut up. Um, Basically, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm inclined to agree. The way you said that sounds like I have a problem with it. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely, you, no. McBeardy, <laughs> troublemaker. No, no, it, it doesn't make any difference. Fun fact, though. Yeah. Um, the because uh, I, I thought you'd bring this up in general, so I did actually look up some fun facts, and then we'll wrap up because we're getting at 26 minutes. Which Ooh. is going to be our shortest podcast ever, I swear. I'm going to do this quickly. <laughs> um, uh, the, the first female police officer was in 1915 was the, with the full powers of arrest. So pre, pre this film, so that's fine. Yeah. First Asian uh, police officer was in 1971, though. But it doesn't matter. It's just, that's just, who cares? Yeah. Um, also, according to IMDb, uh, just a fun fact. I like this one. I don't know if it's true or not. Rose and Nancy buy an ice cream on the beach, and the ice cream seller says, "Enjoy." Using I- <laughs> "enjoy" as an imperative only started in 1980s or 1990s. In 1920, they'd have said brackets correctly, "Enjoy your ice cream." Outrageous! Zero out of ten. Unwatchable now. <laughs> I-, I can see it in a different light. <laughs> Also, there's a couple of other laws that they talk about that, that don't exist. Uh, the CPS doesn't exist in that form at that time. And uh, also the, the um, poli- woman police officer Moss makes a comment about uh, booking someone for not wearing a helmet on their motorcycle, which didn't become a law until the like, 1970s or, or something. Wow. Terrible film. Hated every <laughs> so second. So much research. <laughs> I love IMDb and it's pointless notes uh, mm. and things like that. Also, the first black judge was in 2004 or so. Wow, uh, that's the, a lot the first non black, uh, non white high court judge in the UK uh, after yeah, being appointed a lot deputy high court judge in 2003. So, just fun facts for you because I knew you'd bring yeah. it up, so I, I did some research. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, brilliant. Well, that's the show. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for watching. Beardy, do you have anything else to add? Nope, thoroughly enjoyed it. Great film. Go watch it. It's a good laugh. Absolutely. Couldn't recommend it more. It's great stuff. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Biddy, farewell. See you soon. I will. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.